Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Top 3 Tech. If you saw my last video of the 6500 XT, the XFX Speedster Quick 210, you saw that I made a benchmark at the end like I always do. I'm comparing it at the highest settings possible, ultra or extreme, on multiple games. It's kind of unfair for this card to be compared at that settings to the rest of the GPUs because this is a budget card and it wasn't meant for that. But, I mean, I had to put it on the list anyways. So I decided to make this video today, um, comparing it at low, medium, low, medium settings, maybe high, we'll see, and um, comparing it to itself at PCIe Gen 4 and PCIe Gen 3. That way we can see how that works out, so that way people can get a better understanding of what this card is really about. But let's get this started. <laughs> Get started with the benchmarks let me show you guys that let's see f7 go to advanced onboard devices configuration uh pci 16 mode auto gen 4 hit escape escape oops let me see go to exit save changes and reset okay so we're just going to show real quick that it is on um gen 4 and here is the star of the show, the GPU, the XFX Speedster Quick 210 RX 6500 XT. It's inside my Lee and Lee Land Cool 2. The motherboard is a tough gaming X570. Um, we got 32 gigabytes of Corsair RAM at 3200 megahertz. The CPU is a Ryzen 7 5800X. And then, of course, we, we will be running it with Smart Access disabled, with it enabled for PCI Gen 4. And then for the PCI Gen 3, it will be um, enabled and disabled. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these tests running and that way you guys can see the benchmarks. And as a quick reminder before I get these benchmarks started, the XFX Speedster Quick 210 RX 6500 XT has a boost clock of 2825 megahertz, a game clock of 2685 megahertz, and a core clock of 2420 megahertz. It is running 4GB GDDR6 memory. It is on the RDNA 2 architecture. So just giving you guys a, a quick analysis of this card before we get the results on the test. And today's first benchmark is Time Spy 3D Mark benchmark. It is a DirectX 12 benchmark. And of course we got the XFX Quick 210 XT on the Gen 4 lane. It has a score of 5,559. And we go to the XFX Quick 210 6500 XT Gen 4 Smart Access Memory enabled, it's at 5553. Um, barely a difference. The XFX Quick 210 6500 XT Gen 3 with Smart Access Memory was at 5531. A uh, little gap, but not too crazy. And then the XFX Quick 210 6500 XT Gen 3 on Smart Access Memory was at 5473. And you can see the, the gap starting to form a little bit more. But either way, the score is not the best all around to begin with. When we switch on over to the MSI Combustor at 1080p, um, it is a free program, so it's nice to use as a rendering because anybody can use it and test their card. But the results that we got were a four-way tie at 20 frames per second. So the XFX Quick 210 6500 XT with Gen 4 lanes, Gen 3 lanes, Smart Access Memory on and off. All 20 frames per second. I guess it, that doesn't really make too much of a difference when it comes to this. When we switch on over to Gears 5 low preset benchmark at 1080p, the XFX Quick 210 6500 XT Gen 4 Smart Access Memory ran at 165.7 frames per second. The XFX Quick 210 6500 XT at Gen 3 with Smart Access Memory ran at 162 frames per second. The XFX Quick 210 6500 XT Gen 4 ran at 150.3 frames per second. Then the XFX Quick 210 6500 XT Gen 3 ran at 140 frames per second. So it looks like um, Smart Access memory does make a big difference in this game because the Gen 3 one was um, pretty close to the Gen 4 with it on, surpassing the Gen 4 lanes. I, I was kind of surprised by this, but let's see what other results we get. When we test out Gears 5 on the medium preset benchmark, the XFX Quick 210 6500 XT Gen 4 lanes with Smart Access memory hit 104.9 frames per second. With the XFX Quick 210 6500 XT Gen 3 with Smart Access memory hit 103.2 frames per second. 
X Effect is quick, 210, 6500 XT, Gen 4, hit 97.4 frames per second. And then when we tried the XFX Quick 210 XT on Gen 3 lanes, it hit 92.6 frames per second, showing that smart access memory is the way to go if you have uh, AMD CPU and AMD GPU. When we hop on over to Forza Horizon 4 low benchmark settings at 1080p, the XFX Quick 210 XT on Gen 4 lanes with uh, smart access memory hit 207.8 frames per second. Pretty crazy but it is low. The, uh, Gen 3 lanes with Samon, it hit 195.8 frames per second. The Gen 4 lanes only, it hit 170.1 frames per second. And then the Gen 3 lanes only hit 148.5 frames per second. Um, I'd probably recommend trying to lock it down to 140 frames, so maybe 148 if you have the monitor. If not, I mean, whatever is good for you after that. Testing out Forza Horizon 4 on medium benchmark settings, the XFX Quick 210 XT Gen 4 SAM hit 172.9 frames per second. The XFX Quick 210 XT Gen 3 SAM hit 163.4 frames per second. The XFX Quick 210 XT Gen 4 hit 140.2 frames per second. And the XFX Quick 210 XT Gen 3 hit 122.4 frames per second. So I would just recommend uh, playing this on medium. It looks like you'll hit minimum 120 anyways. Or not minimum, but you'll be getting 120 on, on Gen 3 lanes, so you might as well enjoy that and the better settings. I think it'll be a better gaming experience. All right, we tried the newer Forza Horizon 5 on low benchmark settings at 1080p. And we tried the XFX Quick 210 XT Gen 4 with uh, Samon. We get 138.8 frames per second. And we tried it on XFX Quick 210 XT Gen 3 on Sam. We get 130.4 frames per second. That the XFX Quick 210 with Gen 4 lanes hit 114.1 frames per second. The XFX Quick 210 with the Gen 3 lanes hit the 98.2 frames per second. Goes to show again, Sam is a game changer, and um, the differences between the Gen 4 and the Gen 3 are about 16 frames, eight frames with Sam. Not too much of a difference, but it is the difference between playing at 120. And this is on those settings as well. When we try Forza Horizon 5 on medium settings, the XFX Quick 210 XT Gen 4 with Sam on hits 105.0 um, frames per second. The XFX Quick 210 XT with Gen 3 Sam on hit 96.9 frames per second. With the uh, Gen 4 lanes only, it hit 88.3 frames per second. And with Gen 3 lanes, it hit 76.9 frames per second. So uh, you're barely getting over 60 frames per second with Gen 3. And then with the Gen 4, you're barely getting 88 frames per second. That one's kind of tough. It, I, was, I would probably say, like, try to, if you have a smart axis, maybe put low on some settings so you can try to hit 120 and medium on the others. But um, I'm not too sure what exactly settings you would want to hit. Maybe just leave them at 76 and 88. That way, um, if you hit a spike or something, it won't lag. The next game that we do test out is Shadow of the Tomb Raider on low benchmark settings at 1080p. The Gen 4 with Samon hit 120 frames. The XFX Quick with Gen 4 hit 110 frames. Um, the Gen 3 with Samon hit 104 frames. And Gen 3 without Sam actually tied it. So I guess Sam doesn't make too much of a difference in this game. When we go to the Shadow of the Tomb Raider medium benchmark settings, the Gen 4 Sam hit 84 frames per second. Gen 4 without it hit 83 frames per second, one less. Gen 3 hit 78 frames per second, actually beating out Gen 3 Sam at 77 frames per second. It's all barely, they're all pretty close, but it still beat it. So for the last test of the day, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, low benchmark at 1080p. On Gen 4 Sam, it hit 83 frames per second. Gen 4 without Sam, it got the exact same frames. Gen 3 with Sam, it hit 77 frames per second. And then to Gen 3 without Sam, it hit 77 frames as well. So it seems like um, smart access memory doesn't really make a difference at all in this game. When we hop on over to the medium settings, the Gen 4 smart access memory hit 65 frames per second. 
Gen 3 smart access memory hit 61 frames per second. Gen 4 with no SAM hit 60 frames per second. And Gen 3 with no SAM also hit 60 frames per second. So I would just tune it up to the medium benchmarks. You'll be able to play 60 frames, 1080p. I mean, at the end of the day, this card doesn't get the highest frames, which is kind of sad because um, I feel like before, well, maybe the games are newer, but I feel like before your frames would be a little higher than this. You could probably run at high, maybe ultra, but um, maybe I'm lying. But anyways, this card kind of averages around um, at low settings. You, it seems like you can hit uh, more than 120, but you are at low settings. When you go to the medium settings, it seems like um, you really won't be able to get an average of 120. Um, maybe, like on Forza, you can get around, um, you know, 160 or whatever. That's on the 4. On the 5, that game is demanding. You're only going to be able to do like 60 frames. But if you get a little bit over 60, try to lock it in. If you can get close. Thank you for watching another video from Top 3 Entertainment. Um, I hope you hit like and subscribe. Also, I'm going to have a recommended playlist, a recommended video right here. So make sure to click that as well. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Whether it be to the Top 3 Tech, Top 3 Gaming, or the Why Not Me podcast. You guys are dope. I hope to see you guys in the next video. And of course, let's grow this thing together. Peace. Peace. Peace.